Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you live from Menasha, Wisconsin. I'm going to pull you up here on my screen so I can see what's going on. So share this video with friends. You guys click that share button. Super easy, right? <laughs> I see some people popping in here. Hi Lisa, hi Linda, D is on, Tisha, welcome. So happy to see you guys. Linda, good to see you tonight. I bet you it's hot down there in Arizona, isn't it, Linda? It's um, really nice here in Menasha. There's a lot of bugs out, though. We've got Bonita, Tisha shared. Thank you so much. Margo, Betty, Kathy, welcome. I'm going to get my screen loaded here. I came on a minute early. That never happens, right? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Stephanie, Susan, and five other people. That's what my screen is telling me. Sorry, you guys. Jackie's watching. Welcome. And let me get myself bigger here so I can see your comments coming in when I flip this around. We'll see if the comment. Oh, you guys. My comments are not coming up on my laptop again. Remember that happened last week? And I had my husband's iPad in here. And Molly's not here to help me. <laughs> um, we just rolled into town about, I want to say, 5 or 5.30 and had to get the truck unpacked and all Haley's stuff out and in her car so she could go home with Val and I needed to take a shower because I was kind of gross. <laughs> we were up in northern Wisconsin all weekend. We had a great time. We did not get anything. Um, that was kind of disappointing, but you know, that's the luck of the draw. So we had a lot of fun, a lot of family bonding time. Hi, Sarah and Connie. I see you're popping in here. And Mary, Mary, I just got your DSP sampler in the mail and I texted you. So um, look at your text messages. Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa and Kathy. Melissa, welcome. Judy just popped in. So happy to see you guys tonight. So I have some funny, I have a funny story for you. I'm going to wait till everybody's on because... Maybe I shouldn't wait. Maybe it's going to be, it might be too much information, but I think you guys will get a pretty good chuckle out of it. <laughs> we all need a little more laughter in our lives, right? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> today I was up at 5 a.m. I thought I'd get home in time so I could take a little cat nap, but I didn't. So, yeah, things could get pretty crazy tonight. <laughs> Donna says she loves the hunting photos of little Val. Isn't she just the sweetest? She was honestly just the sweetest. Everybody loved her. They're like, oh my gosh, she's such a good baby and she's so happy. And when she smiles, her eyes light up, her face lights up, and her just like her whole demeanor is just beaming. And um, it was really fun. My mom and I and Haley and Val stayed in a hotel this weekend. Um, we usually stay at the cabin with all of our hunters, but we thought with a baby waking up in the middle of the night, possibly crying and maybe not going back to sleep, that we didn't want to wake all our hunters up. So we um, we got a hotel for the weekend, and I think that was a good decision because it gave us some time to just veg, and um, me and my mom and Haley we, and Val, we just had a great time. So that was fun. Um, we stopped into the gas station this morning to get a bag of ice, and as we were there, three deer crossed the road and went right through the um, McDonald's drive through in Park Falls, Wisconsin. <laughs> so that I'm like, there's three deer right there, and they just went through like they were on their way. <laughs> it was so funny. So um, <clears throat> what else can I tell you? Somebody asked if the picture, I, I shared some pictures from our weekend. Somebody asked if the vehicle in the background was my new Explorer, and it was not. Um, we took Steve's truck up bear hunting because it's just a better vehicle for uh, going off-road. Off and I know that my Explorer is a four-wheel drive, and it can handle that. But he's got a little more um, clearance under the truck, and some of the roads that we go down are pretty crazy. So somebody just said their son has, D said her son has two black bears running wild in his neighborhood if you're interested. <laughs> D, thanks. <laughs> Maybe if we can't find one this coming weekend, I might, I might come visit you. <laughs> so yeah, we just didn't have any luck. Um, 
I, well, I shouldn't say that. Our group split up today because we're getting big, you know. So some people went this way and some people went that way. Those people today got a bear. We didn't even get to see it. Anyways, I know some people are just not about the hunting, and I respect that, but um, it's a way of life for us. I've been bear hunting for 30 plus years. Haley grew up bear hunting. She's been bear hunting ever since she was like, I think I took her up the first time she was two years old. So it's a, it's a family tradition for us, and um, yeah, so. <laughs> so, um, Cindy says, oh, I thought you were bear hunting. Yeah, we were. We didn't get anything. Hmm. Yeah. So anyways, I keep forgetting to give you guys a John update, and I'm sorry that I missed the comments coming through that says, how about a, what's happening with John? What's happening with John? If anybody's new to me, um, hi Haley. <laughs> if anybody is new to me, John is our next door neighbor, and when the whole COVID thing hit, you know, you get a little bored and you get a little silly, right? And so my husband was we didn't, we could, we weren't going any place. We weren't doing anything. We we're just hanging out at home. So he started giving me reports about our neighbor, John. And so he would just walk in my office, open the door, like John just got a new rider, <laughs> stuff like that. It was just hysterical. So I've been giving you guys a John update most of the time. And I've forgotten the last um, few weeks, I think, because nothing is happening with John. John's not doing anything. He's providing us with no new entertainment. Can you believe that? <laughs> Plus, my summer home has been parked in the driveway, which kind of hides what's going on over at John's house. So <laughs> I'm happy to say Steve hauled the um, my summer home back to my mom's house this weekend, so we don't have that in the driveway anymore. So I'll be able to keep a better eye on John, and I promise to update you as things develop. And Jenny asks, how did the hunting dogs react to Val? Um, the dogs love the kids. I mean, they really do. And the dogs are in their dog boxes in the back of the truck. So we took Val up to to pet or do whatever with the dogs. And, and she seemed rather amused by them. And, of course, they wanted to lick her to death. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, what else is happening? Um, this week, have you guys ever ordered pillows from Amazon? Like, they come all squished. And I ordered, um, you know, like 18 inch pillows for your couch, decorative pillows. And they came last week and they're all squished down and, and taped up really tight for shipping purposes, right? And the ends of them were, were brought together in two like um, points and taped over each other. So I took scissors and cut them and cut, cut the ends off two of my two sides, two points of each pillow that I got in the mail. Have you guys done that? Just telling you. So if you order pillows from Amazon, do not cut. It looks like it's packing, but it's really the ends of the pillows. I have covers to go over them, so it didn't matter. And then I'll tell you too that the pillows that I did order, I'm not real crazy about them. They didn't get puffy enough to fill out the 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 pillow, what do you call those things? The pillow case, the square pillow cases. So I don't know. I wasn't too impressed. Maybe if I would have spent more money on the pillows, they were like twelve ninety nine for two. Maybe because I was too cheap, <laughs> that they didn't get fluffy enough for me. So, <clears throat> and somebody's asking about bear stew. Yeah. So we do. Um, we do eat the bears, and um, you can do just about anything with it. You do with beef, right? You can do bear stew. One of the things my mom loves to do is, you know, where you put the a roast any kind of roast, we did use a bear roast, and you put it in a crock pot, and you pour a package of Italian seasoning, a package of brown gravy, and a package of something else, the dry packages of seasonings, and then you put like, I don't know what, a root beer or something like that in there, and you cook it, it's just, you guys know what I'm talking about, I know some of you know what I'm talking about, it's delicious, so it's all again in the way that you prepare it. All, all food is in the way you prepare it. If you prepare it good, it's going to taste good. Um, what else? Oh, update. You guys were asking me about an update on my... Yeah, shams, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> I just saw Wendy. I'm sure somebody else said shams. But yeah, they're pillow shams. Um, an update on my bedroom remodel. <sighs> so when I got the COVID, my guy was done, right? Like he didn't come back for two weeks. And he did come back now, 
and he got everything finished except the barn door. I've got a sliding barn door for my closet that I'm super excited about, but our ceilings are really low in this house, and when he went to put the hardware at the top of the closet door, it was too tall for our ceiling. So he ran all over the place looking for smaller hardware that wasn't as big and um, couldn't find any. So he had to order it and it take three days to come in. So I'm expecting him back this week so that he can um, finish my room. But the flooring's done. The walls are done. I'm still waiting for the windows. Oh my Lord, the windows. So that's taken a lot longer. And I think it has to do with the whole COVID thing too because there's not enough... <clears throat> Not as many people working in these places to produce the things that you need to get the new windows or the new siding. I know there's a wood shortage here. So, yeah. But anyways, I will share pictures of my new bedroom. I'm super excited about it. And I told you guys that, you know, the kids are gone. We're done paying for college and extra car insurance and all the things. And um, now we're starting to fix up this old house. And I feel like I've neglected this house for a long time because, well, things got expensive. You know, Haley was in college. That was expensive. Money was tight. And um, now we're turning our house back into a home again. And that's been really exciting. I did all kinds of decorating for fall that I haven't done in a few years because I just was like, the, you know. So that's been fun. Um... The other thing I want to let you guys know, I have a brand new online kit class with the Have a Hoot bundle. Christmas and Halloween are both in that stamp set. So when we're done with the Facebook Live tonight, I'll post a link to my online classes. You can check out all the ones. If they don't say sold out, they're still available. And then I want to let you guys know that I have a new online class coming and I think it's going to be out. I'm going to have, I'm going to do pre-order probably tomorrow. So you can order it. But the PDF file will be available on Friday. And I haven't decided yet when I'm going to get the pre-cut cardstock packs out in the mail. But um, probably, probably looking at the first week in October. So that's going to be exciting. And if you don't, if you're not familiar, oh, did I tell you what it's going to be? We're going to use the Arrange a Wreath bundle. This is a beautiful stamp set and dies. And if you remember, I had, oh, let me see if I can find them. Here they are. I had Molly. Molly likes to come over and she says, Grandma, what can I help you with? So I had her cut all of these wreaths. And this is from that arrange a wreath bundle that I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. Probably make thank you cards or something like that. But anyways, um, so I have a new online class coming out and Linda's asking the best part of a bear to eat. Well, it's all meat. Um, bears have a lot of fat on them. Their meat is very kind of rich. And they're from the pork family. So I wouldn't say it's a darker meat than pork. But it's different. It's very different. So good question, Linda. Um, so we have a new online class coming. I have a kit class, Have a Hoot for September. And then I'm thinking about adding another type of online class with a pre-cut cardstock pack. But I, I wanted to ask you guys, do you have anything that you are looking for that you can't find out there? Like, I'm up for suggestions on what type of a class I should do, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So if you have any suggestions, pop me an email with your ideas. My email is kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at astampabove.com. Let me know what you're thinking because I, I, I'm, I need some ideas. I don't know exactly what I want to do yet, but I thought you guys are the best ones to ask, right? Okay. Um, ribbon. Oh, if you ordered my, um, what was the last kit class that I did? Love of Leaves. If you ordered the Love of Leaves kit, I told you that I mailed it out without the ribbon because the ribbon went on back order and I didn't want to hold your kits to wait for the ribbon. The ribbon got here over the weekend and I will be getting that out in the mail in the next couple days also. So just know your ribbon is on its way. And um, who is asking that? Becky wants to know, how is my lovely granddaughter Molly doing? Molly with an I, right? <laughs> She's doing really good. She was here on Tuesday and um, we had some fun Tuesday. Steve usually picks her up from school on Tuesdays and we keep her until it's time to take her home because, you know, it's a school night. But um, she's doing really good. She's a sweetheart. We love her. 
Um, what else? Make sure you share this video. That really helps me grow my business and I really appreciate it. And Betty said, are we doing anything for national, what was it, national uh, card day? Um, I, I have to tell you, I've been gone all week and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So when is National Card Day? Is If that's today, we're making cards tonight. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, I told you guys that I was going to share a funny story with you. So if you're ready for this funny story, I think Haley knows what I'm going to tell you. So... When you're out in the wilderness, you know that there are no bathrooms, right? Yeah. So this morning, I had to tinkle. <laughs> so I trotted myself off the trail and went up into the woods. And I'm looking around, make sure nobody can see me. And I did my business. When I went to stand up, I was not in a good place. I was not like in a clearing. I was standing on some brush. I had to kind of pack down some ferny things. And um, when I went to stand up, I lost my balance. I stepped backwards trying to catch my balance and stepped on some branches. And it didn't work out well. And I fell. I fell with my bare butt right in the weeds and the branches. <laughs> Oh my Lord, I can't believe I'm telling this story. <laughs> so all I kept thinking is, thank gosh I tripped backwards because I did not fall in the pee. <laughs> okay? But, so I, I like collected myself, got my pants up, got myself put back together, looking around, can anybody see me? Nobody can see me, thank goodness. And I walked back to the truck. And then I told my mom and Haley that I fell down in the woods with my pants down and whatever. About an hour later, my butt is burning, and I've got like a strip right on the right on my butt cheek that is burning. And I thought, "Ooh, I must have scratched it, right?" And then I was thinking, "Oh my gosh, I hope that I do not, I did not fall in poison ivy, right?" Could you imagine poison ivy on your butt? That would so not be cool. So, anyways, today when I got home, maybe this is too much information, but I think you're gonna get a kick out of it. I took a shower and when I took a shower, I like looked at my butt cheek. I have scratches, scratches all over my butt cheek. Like it's not one scratch, it is several scratches. And I got a couple scratches on the other one too. <laughs> so yeah, how am I gonna explain that to Steve, right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I told him about it, he laughed. And then he gave me kind of a look. That's exactly what happened. No, I didn't get poison ivy. There's no poison ivy. It's just my butt cheeks are all scratched up from the branches. So I know Arla says you're lucky you didn't fall in some poison ivy. I know, right? So maybe that was too much information, but that is life with Kelly. Day, a day with Kelly. This is how things go. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jackie said she's had poison ivy on her butt. Well, I was pretty lucky then because I mean, I... Poof, I was like down. I'm like, oh my lord, what just happened? And it's cold and my butt is cold. And Steve, um, well, if you really want to know what Steve said, he said you should have your boyfriend trim his nails. Oh, that was way too much. And we laughed and laughed. So, <laughs> okay, sorry. Sorry, this is a family show. I shouldn't be telling you things like that, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> their pants. Kimberly says she thinks she just beat her pants. I understand. So we have some prizes to give away from last week. We're going to change the subject right now. Enough with Kelly's butt. <laughs> you get a prize when you leave a comment. So yeah, there was some, oh, and, oh, look at this. My finger was bleeding too. I, I, there must've been some picker bushes. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyways, um, when you leave a comment, if you're new to me, please leave a comment. <laughs> I know, you guys are going to have to clear your eyes now so you can see what's going on. <laughs> this is what I'm giving away. These are the 2020-2022 in color enamel dots. And this is for leaving a comment last week on my Facebook Live. Um, and I drew names. The winner is Pam Phillips of 
Florence, South Carolina. These are going to be coming your way. I hope I have your address. If you're watching, pop me an email with your address, but I think I have it. So I think we're okay there. And then for sharing my video, you get entered in another drawing. Yeah, Francie says, um, if it would have been blackberry bushes, you'd really have some major scratches. Well, I do. <laughs> right down my butt cheek. <laughs> and you know, if it wasn't a little obscene, I would share the picture with you because I did send a picture to Haley and say, look at my butt <laughs> and my mom. And then I said, delete the photo. And my mom immediately messaged me back and said, I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, We'll work on it this weekend because we're going back up hunting. <laughs> don't, don't send the picture to anybody, right? <laughs> okay, for sharing my video last week, I have one of these beautiful kerchief card kits. These are gorgeous. Uh, these were a celebration item last year and they sold out very quickly. Everybody loved them. We have, um, oh, where did my thing go? Right here. Crystal Kunchik from... Pensacon, New Jersey, this is yours. And I don't think I have your address. So Crystal, K-U-N-C-H-I-C-K, I need your address. My email is kelly at a stamp above.com. And I will get this off in the mail to you. And then there's a third way that you can win fabulous prizes. And that is by placing an order with me and all the people who placed an order between last Sunday and this Sunday. Uh, are entered in a drawing and I have the Touched My Heart. This is a beautiful exclusive host set that's only available when you place a minimum $150 order. Suzanne Cullen of Sanibel, Florida. This is coming your way and I do have your address. So congratulations to all of you. I'm going to set these back here so I don't lose track of them in the mess that we are about to make. All right, I think I got everything. So make sure you share my video, leave a comment, and if you'd like to place an order, I always appreciate your orders. And I think that's it. Yep, okay, those are my notes. All right, you guys, so I think what I'm gonna do first, uh, we made a, hang on, let me find it here. We made, oh, here it is. Remember we made a slimline card last week. So if you go to my blog, www.astampabove.com, you will find this card and you will find all the measurements for it. It is stinking adorable. This uses the Have a Hoot bundle from our holiday mini catalog. That is the one that I have a kit class going right now. So if you would like to order that, that kit comes with um, designer series paper, the plaid tidings designer series paper, the playful pets trim combo ribbon pack, all the trimmings, embellishments, and pre-cut card stock for eight cards. Plus, you're going to get one of our little tins. I'm looking for the tin. Here it is. I knew I had it here someplace. You're going to get one of these little tins with your... Oops. I've been playing with your kit. And um, I'm going to give you two ideas. A Christmas idea and a um, Halloween idea for the tin. But I want everybody to know you only get one tin in your kit. You're not getting two. But you will get two ideas so you can do whatever you want with it. These kits are also in our holiday mini catalog. You get four of them for $12 and you can do a lot of fun things with these. So that's going to be a little bonus in the Have a Hoot kit. And what else? Somebody just asked if my... Um, Phone was plugged in and it is and someone else just told me Debbie just said to mirror my phone and we're gonna flip it around now so we don't need to mirror and then you'll be able to see things won't be backwards so first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a I brought the card out did I even tell you we're gonna make a slimline envelope because you guys were saying well what about an envelope for this card like we don't have envelopes this size so well, I'm going to show you how to make one and I thought that was going to be really fun oh and Marcia asked um did I ever give away a prize for the card challenge from before I got sick and I don't think I did and I thought I wrote that on my list but I did not so I will make sure that that happens very soon um that was the mystery challenge, I believe. Miss, I can't even spell mystery challenge prize. Okay, 
Thank you, Marsha, for reminding me about that. I did see that, and I thought I was going to get that ready for tonight, but I forgot to put it on my little note here. So I will make sure that happens. Thank you so much for reminding me of that. Okay, we're going to flip the camera around, and I, I do not have comments coming up over here on my laptop, you guys, and Steve's not in the house to give me his iPad. So I'm probably going to have to stand up. And I'm a lazy stamper. I like to sit on my butt when I'm stamping. So I'm going to stand up so I can see your comments. But if I miss your comments, I apologize. So here we go. If you get motion sickness, please close your eyes. I'm going to flip this phone around. I'll let you know when you can open them. And hang tight. Almost ready. I like to make sure everything's straight. You can see my little cord here. Let me get that out of the way. Get my lights in here so we got some good lighting going on. Okay, I think we're ready. There we go. Okay, so just so you guys know, this is my blog address. There are tons of videos, card ideas, shopping lists, dimensions. You got the whole thing on there. And also, this is my current host code. If your order is under $150, Use this host code. If it's over, don't use it. You're going to get some rewards from Stampin' Up. I definitely want you to have those. We are going to be using the Magic in This Night Designer Series paper to make a slimline envelope for this adorable little card. Is that not the cutest? We made this last week, so if you missed it, you can go right on my Facebook page and you'll find a video that shows you exactly how to make this card. I don't know why this is here, but... <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Let's get busy. Oh, I'm going to have to stand up. Let me take my... I'm getting hot, so hang on. Take my little jacket off. I wish I could... Oh, never mind. I was going to say I wish I could remember where I got this bracelet, but I thought this was a bracelet somebody gave me. I actually bought this, so we don't need to worry about it. I was going to give a shout out, but yeah, I think I bought this one. <laughs> okay. So... Magic in this night designer series paper. This is some gorgeous Halloween paper and it's very different from what we've been used to in the past. There's a lot of flowers. It's kind of spooky flowers. We've got some spider webs, some bats, some more bats here, some spiders. It's just very cool and I love the colors in this. By the way, this is a designer series paper sampler. I do have a few of these left. You get all of the designer paper, well, I should say 12 different kinds of designer paper from our holiday mini catalog with the little dots so that you can make up this sheet for each one of those designer papers. I like to keep this in the back of my designer paper packet so that I can just look at it and go, oh, there's some Cajun Craze paper that I want to use without having to look through the entire pack. So that's what I do with it. And again, if you're interested in getting a designer series paper pack, they're $30, and you're going to find them on my blog under online classes. Okay, bringing in my paper trimmer, and I am going to take my designer paper. I'm going to cut this 10 by 8 and a half, and I want to let you guys know that I will have a blog post up with still photos of everything we make tonight and dimensions, but I probably will not get it up till tomorrow because, like I said, I was up at 5 o'clock. I drove for four hours just to get home, and bear hunting is, and I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and sugarcoat it, but I will get my blog posts up in the morning. The other thing I want to tell you is I have a blog hop tonight that'll go live at 8 p.m. Central Time. And um, I believe the theme is fall cards. I've got a really cool set of cards that I'm going to be sharing on my blog. And that goes live at 8 o'clock. So don't leave here because we'll still be stamping. Okay? But you can look at it after we're done. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. All right. I'm just making sure. Oh, my gosh. I can't even. Hang on. i got to change glasses here because I'm looking at my phone. I can't even read what's on there. And now I can. It's funny. There's a lot of problems. <laughs> okay, so I am going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to put it in here like this. Now, if your paper has a design on it, you want to figure out which way you want your design to go. So I'm going to look at this, and I want my design to go this way. 
So I'm going to cut this at eight and a half. And again, this is 12 by 12 paper. And I'm going to cut it at 10 inches. So we're doing eight and a half by 10 inches. Now, slimline cards are all different sizes. I am making an envelope for my slimline card. All those dimensions are on my blog. So this is going to fit this. And I'm using this pattern, which I thought was pretty cool, right? Okay. Now, this is going to be the top of my of my envelope. So I am going to score that at one and a half. Get my score blade here. And then the bottom at nine and a half. So one and a half, nine and a half. Okay. Now we're going to turn it this way and I'm going to score the left side at two and a half. And the right side at six and a half. Oh, that didn't work out. Oh, I got it at eight and a half. I'm like, oh Lord, what did I do wrong? Okay, six and a half. So I'll say those again for you in case you want to write them down. This is the top is scored at one and a half. The bottom is at nine and a half. Then I turned it this way. And this side is scored at two and a half and this at six and a half. I think I just said that wrong. Oh my lord. Okay, top one and a half. This is nine and a half, and that's on the short side. Then on the long side, it's scored at one and a half. No, two and a half and six and a half. Does that make sense? Two and a half, six and a half. It will in just a second. Sorry, you guys, I don't mean to be confusing. Okay, so now you're going to take your scissors, and what we're going to do, and I know this is kind of hard for you to see, this is the top, and I'm going to cut out that little scored corner, okay, just like that. Does that make sense? And then we're going to cut this one out, and I'm really shaky tonight. I have been shaky ever since I was sick, and I do have to tell you guys, I'm still dealing with migraines just about every day. I have like a slight headache right now, but I've been taking this Excedrin that um, my stepdaughter Anna told me to get, and um, it's it's working, but I'm still getting headaches every day, which is kind of crummy. Okay, so I just clipped those a little bit, okay, and then we're going to go down to the other end here, and we're going to cut out the corners. Make sure that I'm doing this right. And here we go. And then we're going to cut this corner out just up to that score line. Kind of tilting it in the light here so I can see what's going on. And now we're going to kind of put a slant on these down here. I'll show you this in just a second so you can really see what's going on here. I know I'm kind of flipping it around and you're like, wait, Kelly, what, 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 right? Okay, so we did that. I just cut a slant here and a slant here. Now with these, this bottom edge right here, we're going to bring in <clears throat> our detailed trio punch. Okay, this does three different things. It's a corner rounder. It has this image and then an oval hole. And we're going to round the corners on this tab right here. I'm going to just push it in there. Nice round corner. I love this thing. It is a really, really nice. And then I'll show you what it does. Um, if I have enough. Yep, I do. You get this. Here, let me do this. Can you see that? That's really cute, right? And then the other, the trio part. Hang on. Show you what this does. Hang on a second, because my paper isn't really big enough here. Oh, this one goes just like this. And that makes a hole that you can like put ribbon through, or you need a, a hole at the top of a tag. You've got that. But this is called the Detailed Trio Punch. And now, I think I want my bats on the outside of my envelope. Maybe, I'm, yeah, I do. <clears throat> so, we're going to start folding on our score lines just like this. Okay. 
Here we go. Now, you can put your tab, your little tab for the bottom right inside. Go like this, okay? You're gonna put your adhesive or whatever you, um, glue or whatever you use on these. Glue, glue, and then here comes our slim line card. Look at that. Boom. Now, to mail this, I would use the um, labels. Let me grab one of those. I have a little, this, this has postage printed on it, but one of these labels, you know what I mean. One of these address labels right on here, and then you would write the address on it. That's what I would do. Um, people were asking questions about this on another website. Does this printed paper go through the mail okay like the post office doesn't like hate you for having something like this no it's fine um, I have all kinds of um, printed envelopes that I get from Amazon for shipping your prizes out and the post office doesn't care so there you go here is our slimline envelope fits our slimline card and of course you would just make this different sizes for different slimline sized cards what do you guys think Pretty cool, right? I thought this was really neat, super easy to make. And if you wanted to, you could flip it around and you could have the flowers for the outside. And um, as far as this goes, this is a pretty floral pattern, but you're like, but there's bats on the inside. Nobody's ever gonna see that because when they get their card, if you wanted to put a flowery card in here, when they get it, they're gonna like slit this open. They're not gonna see the inside of the card any or the envelope anyways, right? I mean, that's the way I think about it. So it wouldn't matter that it has bats on the inside, but this is really pretty. So there we go. I am going to, I'll actually glue this together so that I can use it for my slimline card because I do need an envelope for this. And then I'm going to put some glue right here and do this. So I've got glue on that bottom, glue right here. And then when I get ready, I'll, I'll write in my card. And when I get ready to send it, I'll put some glue right here and seal that off just like that. So there we go. Boom! Slim line envelope. Love it. Okay, let me get ready for our next project. So if you guys read my messages about what we were going to be making this weekend, I mentioned a gift card holder. And I'm super excited about this gift card holder. It uses the Have a Hoot um, bundle. Oh, here's the Plaid Tidings Designer Series Paper. This is pretty much all the stuff that I'm using in my kit class in September. Here's that stamp set. Can you guys see that okay? I hate it when it glares in the light. Um, we've got the dies. I've got my stamp set all mounted and ready to roll here. I'm also using a two, oh my punches are so dirty from stickers, two and a quarter inch circle punch. And hang on just a second here. I've got another card to share with you too. A couple cards to share with you using this bundle. Let me get my little directions out here so I know what I'm doing. And ink pad. Embellishments. We've got some markers coming in here. And the striped playful pets baker's twine which i absolutely love okay let's see you guys know i'm always a little discombobulated when i am gone all weekend and come back to something that i prepared several days ago isn't that just hysterical that i i made this i designed this but then i'm like oh my gosh what do i do what if, what what do i do now i don't know so yeah just bear with me so i can get my head wrapped around this it's funny, but I have the worst memory ever. Okay, we have an envelope. Um, what's this say? Scrap. I wrote scrap on here, and then I need 18 fall cards for our team swap. Excellent. Here comes 
our shaded spruce card base. And we're going to do a little scoring on here. Let me move this over. Set that up there. Bring this in. And get my paper trimmer back. So, um, shaded spruce. This is four and a quarter by 11. Oh, and you guys, I'm not standing up anymore, and then I can't see what you're saying. So just know that. I'm sorry. My computer's still not working right. And it's not my computer, you guys. It makes, I always make it sound like I have crappy equipment. I don't. It's Facebook. Facebook messes with us <laughs> just about every way possible, and it is a Facebook problem. Okay. We're going to go up to three and three quarters, and we're going to score this four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock. And then we're going to go to nine and a quarter and score it again. Okay. And that's going to give us a fold here and a fold here. So it just kind of meets like that. Now, I've got a piece of the Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper. This is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. I've got Whisper White that's four by four. I have uh, another piece of Whisper White that is six and three quarters by three. We need to score that also. Six and three quarters by three. And we're going to score that at a half inch and five inches. So I'm going to put it in this way. Score it at a half an inch and five inches. And again, all of these dimensions will be on my blog with still photos and a complete shopping list. So this doesn't make you crazy. Okay. And then, let's see. We have some more pieces. Let me think about this. Um, shaded spruce, that's a scrap. We have a half inch strip of white and we're going to trim that down, I believe, uh, half inch by three and three quarters. We have real red that is three quarters of an inch by three and a half. Then we have whisper white that is two and a half by three and a half. And real red that's two and five eighths by three and five eighths piece of vellum. I already told you about this white. Okay, here we go. I know that sounds confusing. Stay with me, everybody. It's really, really not confusing. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I am going to take this piece and I'm going to fold on those score lines and you're going to fold it opposite. So the little one goes backwards and this one goes this way. Okay, then we are going to take this layer and we're going to run it through the winter snow embossing folder. Look how pretty that is. So you're just going to run this through the embossing folder. And when you do that, you're going to have a piece that looks like that. Isn't that pretty, you guys? Absolutely gorgeous. Hang on. I'm going to see if I can get this up on my screen again. Hang with me for a second. See if it gives me any comments. Oh, here they come. Yay. Okay. Leona says, okay, I'm staying with you. Excellent. Okay. So there's that little piece. And again, this is called the winter snow. It's in our holiday mini catalog. It's all these little snowflakes. They're so, so pretty. Then I have a piece of vellum. And we are going to take our little love birds. Now when you use vellum you need a permanent ink. Stazon is a permanent ink. I highly recommend black Stazon. And we're going to stamp this right on our vellum just like that. Okay. We're going to set that aside for a little bit here. I'm going to clean my stamp off. And this is our our chamois, S-H-A-M-M-Y. I love this thing for cleaning stamps. It's wonderful. You just rinse it out in water and it's ready to roll again. And I just got it in a clear case. And again, it's called a chamois. You can find any of these products on my store. Now I'm going to 
take, where did our scrap go? Remember I said I had a scrap with a little note on it. Now I don't know what I did with it. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Hang on. Oh, Lord, help me. I don't know where my scrap is. I'll grab a new one. So now I'm going to use Memento ink. And we're going to stamp our little owls. Okay. And we're going to color those. And I'm going to be using Smoky Slate. I always like to color first with the darkest in a, in a, it's under my blue. I have blue here? Oh, my glue. Oh, I don't see that scrap. I don't know what I did with you guys, but it doesn't matter. I've got one here. Thanks for trying. I know sometimes I can be kind of, I don't pay attention good and then you guys are telling me stuff and I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. So I just kind of like to, and I'll hold this up to the camera so you can see it a little better. I can't zoom in on a Facebook Live. It just doesn't, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. <laughs> and I say that because I could lose you all. We don't want to do that. Okay, so that's what I've done. Oh, great. My screen just locked up. Yay. Huh, I don't know what's happening over there. I'm just going to keep playing with you. Okay, so that's my dark smoky slate. And now I'm going to come in with my light smoky slate. And I'm going to, oh, I know, hang on. When you do these owls, you also need to do their little eyelids. Because their eye, these eyes are closed on this one. And then we got a half an eyelid on this one. And I'm using the dark smoky slate for that. So, just like that. Isn't that cute? And now, oh yeah, here it is. Thank you guys. <laughs> I found it. Thank you so much. You guys are always so helpful. I wish you were here with me so you could like go, Kelly, ah, it's right over there. So I just like to go through and color where I need to color. And then I'll come back and blend so that it doesn't look just all globby and so distinctive between the light and the dark color here. And I always like to show that because I think this is just like magic. You see how it's really very distinctive, like all these marks that I made on the wing? It's not very attractive. Now you just come back in and you just keep blending until you don't see those distinctive marks. But they still look like they're shading. And then you look really artsy-fartsy. And I love to look artsy-fartsy. Like, I couldn't draw these little owls to save my butt. I just really couldn't. And my butt probably needs to be saved right now, right after the bushes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you guys. Okay. Now we're going to come in and we're going to do the little feet with Dark Daffodil Delight. And their little beaks, just like that. Let me see if I need to do anything else here. Um... Oh, I should have done this, too. I've got shaded spruce. I didn't stamp that very good, but I've already got this die cut, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. But we're going to color the little leafy things in. Oh, and the one really important thing that I wanted to tell you. Instead of using real red for my berries on this holly, or whatever it is, um, I use Dark Poppy Parade. And even though I'm using real red cardstock, I think if I used the Real Red Stampin' Blend marker, it would be really dark on here, whereas I know the Poppy Parade is going to really show up and pop better, and it's still going to look great with the red cardstock. So there's just a little tip. If you need something to be a little bit brighter but still go with the red, you can use the Dark Poppy Parade. Okay, now this little scrap right here, we are going to take the dies out. We've got some little, um, like evergreeny leaves. And we're going to die cut those on this green piece, okay? And then we're going to take the die that goes, hang on, let me get these back in here so I don't lose them that goes with these owls and that holly, and we're gonna die cut that. And when we do that, it's gonna look like this. Okay, you're gonna have your little owls, and you're gonna have your little leafy spriggy deals, 
and your little holly. See how bright the berries are? Yeah, I just thought that was a because I've had that problem before where I, I wanted them to really show up, but they turned a little bit darker than I wanted them. So that's why I use the Poppy Parade. Okay. All right, here we go now. Let's get this out of the way. What was this for? Oh, this is our layer. <laughs> we got a little bit more stamping to do here, you guys. And then I'm going to show you how this gift card works. So I'm going to take my shaded spruce ink and my Merry Christmas, and I'm going to stamp that on this little half-inch strip of Whisper White. Oh, then I need, hang on, I need my little uh, end punch deal. Where is that? Hang on, I gotta find a punch. Here it is. Oh, that wasn't too hard. And I'm using the banner pick a punch here, and we're gonna use this banner punch. And, ooh, I just stood up really fast and I got dizzy. Hang on. <laughs> we don't want Kelly passing out here. I'm gonna stick that in here. I always kinda look to look at the back to make sure that it's in here straight. There we go, okay. And now we're gonna stick this other one in here. Make sure that that's in here straight. To look at the back. Doesn't look straight to me. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so there's our cute little banner. I love these banner punches because they work perfect. And you don't have to chop, 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 and then pretty soon you have to redo it. Who has done that? Me! I've done that many times. All right, we're gonna glue this to our three quarter inch red piece. Yeah, I'm still feeling the effects of the old coronavirus. Like, still things just aren't really quite right. And I know people keep telling me to be careful, and I am, I'm really listening to my body, you guys, and I appreciate all of your advice because I am not, um, a medical person like I am so not medical like when I go to the doctor I really should take somebody with me because I come home and they're like so what did they say and I'm like I don't know <laughs> is there anybody else that does that like I have no idea <laughs> I'm terrible okay I'm gonna put one more right here in the middle because I want that to be nice and sturdy then I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of my owls and then I need a little baby dimensional. So I've got regular dimensionals. Oh, hang on. And then I've got little teeny weenies. We'll put the one on the back of our holly. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, I didn't want that on there. All right, I just peeled it off. None on the back of our holly. Now we're going to take this. Let me close this up. We're going to punch this out with a two and a quarter inch punch. And I'm just going to center it nicely. Just like that. Okay, this is our vellum cardstock. We're going to take the backs off of our dimensionals. And that stays on ink will dry on here, whereas regular ink won't dry on vellum because it's a non porous surface. So. And then we're going to take these little cutie patooties, aren't those adorable? And we're going to add those. And I think what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to use mini glue dots. Because sometimes glue doesn't stick real good to vellum, but mini glue dots will stick. So I'm going to add a mini glue dot right here. And it's okay if it's kind of bigger than, bigger than our um, little leafy thing. I'm just going to stuff it under that owl and stick it on there. Oops, I don't want the owl to stick. There we go. And then here comes another one. And I'm going to put that oops, right on the back. Oh yeah, Crystal, you did win something. You need to email me your address, please. Thank you, Debbie, so much for telling Crystal that. Because if she came in later, she wouldn't know that. You're sweet. Okay, so we got that. 
Then I think I'll take just one more of these little ones and I'm going to add that right down in here. And it's just fun to do this kind of stuff, isn't it? Like just to keep adding stuff and filling it in. And so I die cut three of these. That's what you're going to need. Oh, great. Now my page is unresponsive. Facebook hates me, I swear. <laughs> I know, And I know hate is a very strong word, but I feel very strongly about it. I am not going to lie. Facebook is giving me a hard time. It says my page is unresponsive. I don't know. So I can't see your comments anymore, you guys. I was watching them, but look at how cute that is. Is that not really super cute? Okay, we are going to take this and we're going to add some dimensionals to the back. Now, I don't want to see those dimensionals through my vellum. So I'm just going to put them behind my owls, right? So now you can't see them. Okay, and I'm going to pick off the backs. I'm going to, oh, we need to do ribbon. Hang on, I gotta find it. Where's my ribbon? Mm, here it is. So we've got this red striped ribbon. I thought I was using the Baker's Twine, but I'm not. Remember, I was gone all weekend, so yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of ribbon. I'm going to cut it about that long. I'm going to put it right in the middle here, and now I'm just going to, I could use a mini glue dot, but I've got my Amish tape right here. So I'm going to use my Amish tape, meh, maybe. Here we go, Amish tape, there we go. I'm just going to fold that around the back. Now I'm going to use a mini glue dot right there. You do whatever you want to do, but you'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. You need this to fold down. So we've got this, there we go. And then we're gonna take a little piece of this ribbon. I want this to look like it's an ornament hanging on the front of my card. That's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna trim this. Be careful so you don't poke yourself with these scissors. They're very, very sharp and you will bleed. I've had enough bleeding today. My finger, I fell in the bushes. If you missed the beginning of my Facebook Live, you will need to go back and watch it so you can hear about the bushes and my butt and my bleeding finger. <laughs> That's a lot, isn't it? Okay, so I've got my dimensionals off the back here. I'm going to bring my little cutie patootie little owls down in here. And I'm just going to center that right on my layer here. My ivy goes right up onto my ribbon. And now I'm going to put a little glue dot that I kind of bundled up here so it's a little bit smaller right at the top there and now doesn't it look like a little ornament you guys it's so cute right I love 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 it yes Cindy's asking if she missed something about the Amish tape so while I'm doing the rest of this card I will tell you about the Amish tape you're going to glue this onto your red piece so my mom lives in an area where there's lots of Amish people and she always goes to their, they have like a liquidation store where they get stuff from liquidation places and sell it at their store. And my mom loves these Amish girls. They're just adorable. And so I went there with her one day and I picked up like a gazillion rolls of tape. They were only 50 cents a piece. And I thought, oh my gosh, tape is expensive, right? So I got all this tape and I put it in my little tape dispenser here. It is the most hateful tape ever. It is flimsy and it doesn't tear off right and then you get it on and it flops over on your finger and then you're like, uh, and all the things. So that's my Amish tape story. But I am bound to determine I am going to use all the tape. I'm not gonna toss it out like I hate it, but I'm stubborn and we're gonna use it. Okay, now, this is our piece of designer paper and this is our uh, three and three quarters by three and three quarters okay I wanted this to be have some red in it so I got out my stamp and write marker and I got out my ruler and this is what I did I'm taking the wider end and I am going to just go in here and I am going to make my own red plaid paper in each one of these white areas, I'm gonna to try to get it straight. You guys are, it's, a, it's hard. 
when I'm under the gun and you're watching me like this. So try to look away while I do this. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> if I was like, if you were really here, I would ask you to please turn away so that I don't be so nervous. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. And I am using the wide end of my, um, my marker. This is my Stampin' Write marker, not a Stampin' Blend. And I probably could use a Stampin' Blend, but I just grabbed this marker. You can try it. And I'm just making my own red plaid paper because I needed something that had a little more color in it. And you could make this any color of plaid that you wanted. You could do the whole 12 by 12 sheet and then cut it up. Um, I cut this for my layer right away. I need one more line right here. So this is just another way that you can alter your products to make them be what you need them to be. Look at how cute that is, right? I love this. Okay, here we go. We have a four by four white piece. We're going to add our plaid to the white piece. And here we go. We're gonna bring in our card base now. The white piece is gonna go right up here. So the card base looks like this. It meets in the middle right here. We're gonna take and we're gonna put some glue not down here at the bottom, okay? Fold this together and now you're going to line this up so that your top left and right margins are the same with the shaded spruce peeking out from under this. So that's why we didn't put any glue right down here at this very edge, okay? Now we're gonna come in with this piece and we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're gonna put glue, but not all the way down at the bottom, not way down there. And now we're gonna come in and we're gonna have this kind of fall off the bottom onto the green. I just think this is a neat, very neat look. Then we're gonna come in with our little Merry Christmas and get the backing off of here. For those of you that may have come in late, I cannot see your comments right now because my screen is my my screen. My screen is frozen on my laptop. So just know that I can't see any comments right now. Because I'm sitting on my butt because I got kind of dizzy. Okay. And we have two more of the little sprigs from the die set. This is the Have a Hoot. I'm gonna put just a tiny little bit of glue on here. And I'm going to stick this right here. And here's another one of the little sprigs. Oh, I think that's too much glue. Hang on, let me, let me get some of that off of there. I don't want it squishing out. I'm gonna put this one kind of going this way. I just wanted a little embellishment on there, right? That's what I wanted. It was just a little bit of embellishment down here. Okay, so what do you guys think so far? Is this not super duper cute? Well, it doesn't look like anything on the inside, but it's pretty super cute, right? Okay, now what we're gonna do, remember this white piece? The white piece is six and three quarters. Hang on, I gotta find it again. Six and three quarters by three. And I scored it at a half inch and five inches. And then I'm folding it like this. Okay, so the, this goes back, this goes forward. We're gonna take from all of us and our shaded spruce. You could put any sentiment in here that you wanted, but I'm, I'm using my Have a Hoot bundle. I'm gonna fold up this little flap and I'm going to stamp my sentiment right there. Okay, here comes some glue tiny bit of glue on the very outside edges of this flap, okay? Here we go. And now we're going to grab our card and we are going to put a tiny bit of glue on the outside edge of this bottom flap, just like this. Whoops, I just mangled my little... Be careful with your little holly pieces. I just mangled mine but it laid back down, no big deal. Okay, so now we've got a little pocket right here. This goes right in that little pocket. You're going to 
put this back so it's flat. We had it folded like this before, but now it's gonna be flat like this. And we're going to push it up to our fold, get it centered from side to side here. Whoops, I got glue on my fingers and it's sticking to me. This is laying flat now. We're gonna add our glue here. Not too much, you don't want it squishing all over. And now we're gonna close this. Okay, we're gonna give it just a second to dry. And now when you open that up, this part slides up and you have a little pocket here for a gift card. And that is the perfect size for a credit card, card size gift card. And as you can see, I have a Maurice's card here because that is like my favorite clothing store. What do you guys think? Do you see how this is working? Pulls it right up. So you've got a moving gift card holder. Is that not just adorable? This is the Have a Hoot bundle. Now, I made this card last week, okay, with the Have a Hoot bundle. This card was on my blog, introducing my online class with the Have a Hoot. Is that not cute? And then, of course, we have the Slimline card and the slimline envelope that I made tonight. You can find all the details for all of these other cards on my blog. There's videos for them. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? Okay, so I'm gonna just leave this sit here for a second. I've got, what time is it? It's only 8.06. Can you guys want another card? Because I have a really cool card to share with you. If, but if it's too much for tonight, I'll save it until next week. But if you want it tonight, I will definitely make it tonight because I said I was going to do it. Where did my chamois go? Do you guys see the chamois? I don't know where the chamois went. Let me get this put away. I was going to clean my stamps, but now I can't find it. Get this put away, this put away. Okay, I'm looking at my phone. Thank you guys. I know I love gift card holders that do things like that, right? Like you could just play with it all day. It just slides up, slides up, slide. and that people are going to be so mesmerized by your brilliance, right? So have a hoot is my newest class. There's Halloween and Christmas in here. This is a kit class. It's $49. You can add on the stamp set for an, and the dies for an additional $61 that includes shipping and tax. And you get eight pre-cut cards, four different designs. You get to make two of each. Plus, you're going to get an idea for Christmas and an idea for Halloween with these cute tins. These are really fun. And you get one tin included with your kit. Also, you're going to get all the trimmings embellishments you get a roll of this red ribbon and a roll that this is almost empty now but a roll of the black and white baker's twine and you get the plaid tidings full pack of the plaid tidings designer series paper with my kit class for $49 and like I said if you don't have the stamp set and the dies you can add those on for an additional $61 they'll all be mailed out starting the week of the 28th so this one is going to be coming up pretty soon here. Hang on, my crown is falling off. <laughs> okay, let me get all this stuff out of the way. Judith said, if I need to stop, I can save a card for next week. I'm going to try to get this card done, Judith, because it was my Technique Club card. And I know people want to see an example of this because I haven't done it in a video yet. So this is gonna be a technique card. I think you guys are really gonna like it and I am feeling okay. I just stood up too fast and I got kind of dizzy. And that'll happen, right? Like it's it's okay. I'm, I'm fine, thank you, bless your, bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, you know, things are still weird, you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I am still not operating at 100%. And I've been very careful. Like, I slept a lot over the weekend, and um, I'm really watching myself so that I don't overdo it. But I did get a lot of sleep this weekend. We went back to our hotel room early. We didn't stay out real late at the cabin. So it's it's been okay. All right. You guys ready for another one? I hope so. Lots of water. I have my strawberry lemonade, Nancy. 
What are you guys drinking? I need to know. Okay. What else did I make tonight? Oh, I made the envelope. Okay. Um, this is the Forever Greenery Designer Series paper. And holy cannoli. This is so gorgeous, right? Then we've got the Forever Fern stamp set. Let's see what else is. Oh, here's all my stamps. I wondered what happened to those. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm finding all kinds of good stuff in here. Let's see. Sorry, you guys, I should have gone through this, but I didn't. It's kind of a little bit of a mess. I had this out with my one of my assistants so she could make my um, Technique Club cards for me. She is awesome. She does a fantastic job. Okay, Pear Pizzazz Ink. What else? We got some embellishments here. Here's some more Amish tape. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So I don't know if I actually have a card. Oh yeah, I do. Here's my card. I, I'm like, where is my card for this? Well, that's not it. Hang on. Let me find it. It's here someplace. Or maybe it's not. Hmm. I got it here. Okay. We're good. We're good to go. So we are going to be using a card base of Garden Green that is five and a half by eight and a half. And then, set this over here. I've got, oh my goodness, what is this? A mess, that's what it is. I've got some gold foil paper. I've got a piece of Garden Green this piece is going to be three and a half by four. I've got a piece of Whisper White that looks like it's four by five and a quarter. And a piece of Pear, no, yeah, that's right. And a piece of Pear Pizzazz that's also four by five and a quarter. Okay, let me set this off to the side here. Oh, and I've got a one and three quarter inch circle punch. Now, oh boy, hang on. Maybe this wasn't a good plan. I don't have any paper here. Where's my designer paper? Hmm. Okay. Are you guys with me? Because I gotta cut some paper. Here we go. I'm gonna bring in my paper cutter. And we are going to be using the Forever greenery paper. Let's grab, we'll grab this design. We will do this design. And let's do this design. Okay, so I got three different, I don't know how many I need here, but we're going to go four and three quarters by two. So I'm going to do a two inch here. See, this part should have been cut, but it's not because I thought it was in here and it's not. <laughs> so now you're going to get it right from the ground up. So two by four and three quarters. I got that. Okay. Here's a piece. Then we're going to grab this one and we're going to do two by four and three quarters. There's another piece. Oops, one, two. Here's the last one. Oh, do I want to do it this way or this way? I don't know. We'll do it this way. Two by, well, that end is all scraggly. I'm going to turn it around because my end is bent. Four and three quarters. Okay. So here's our three pieces of paper. Let me move this out of the way. Isn't this stuff beautiful, you guys? It is so gorgeous. I love it. All right, now we are going to take from the top right corner to the bottom, or I'm the top left to the bottom right, and we're going to cut it on a diagonal. So now I have a piece that looks like this, okay? We're going to do the same thing with this one. Top, 
left bottom right corner. Here's another one. Same thing here. Top left, bottom right corner. Here we go. Okay. Whew. All right, now we are going to grab our card base and fold it in half. And again, I'm sitting down. I can't really see your comments, so I'll stand up in a second. And oh, I can't remember where did this die come from. I don't remember. Does anybody recognize that? I'm looking. Hang tight. Um, I can't find it, but I'll put it in my blog post. I don't remember which die this comes from, but you're going to die cut this on your gold foil paper, and you're going to end up with this beautiful thing. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't, yeah, I'll figure out where it came from. Okay, here's our green paper. Garden green, certainly celery. Or <laughs> Pizzazz. Who remembers certainly celery? Do you remember? That is like a color from five million years ago. Isn't it funny how those old things pop up in your head? And I've almost done that so many times, but today is the first time it ever came out of my mouth. Okay. Oops. So we've got this as our garden green. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our different papers here. Now this is called a starburst technique and this is part of my technique club for um, August. Yeah, because it's September right now. So what we're going to do is we are going to place these on here. And um, one of my team members, Kathy Miller, showed this to us in a team meeting demonstration. I love our team meetings. We we have so much fun with our team meetings. Whoops, let me see what I'm doing here. And yep, here we go. Kathy Miller showed this to us and I said, oh my gosh, I have to do this for my technique club for this month. So, and you just keep kind of putting it on here like this. You want to make sure that your ends are all over covering up that garden green. And then you just kind of fit it in here however you can. So this is the way I'm gonna do mine. And this is the way I'm gonna do this. Okay, so now that I have it figured out, I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm, oh, Kathy said to add glue here. We'll see what happens. I could have just, so I'm gonna kind of just center these just like this. So these two pieces go right in the center. You want to make sure that these ends are over the edge of the garden green paper. Does that make sense? And if this is very confusing, you'll see it all in just a second. I'm going to get rid of that glue right there because I shouldn't have done that. Okay, now I'm just going to put some glue here. Here we go. Again, you want to make sure that this is covering up that very top corner of this paper, right? Okay, and then we're gonna put this one right here. So I'm gonna put some glue right here. I'm leaving a little bit of space in between each one of these designer papers so we can see that beautiful garden green in between each one. And here comes, and again, you wanna make sure you're getting it above this corner up here, but that it goes all the way to the bottom there. Are you guys liking this? This is, I just thought this was spectacular and beautiful. And you could do this with any designer paper, but this forever greenery, oh my gosh, it is gorgeous. Okay, now this looks like a big old mess, but what you do is you turn it over on the back and now you're gonna use your garden green as your guide and you're gonna trim off all this excess. 
just like that. Just like this. Whoops, hang on, I got kind of crazy. Try not to cut on your green like I just did because I'm getting a little <laughs> a little flustered here. I'm not gonna not gonna try and kid ya. There we go. Okay. Last one. There we go. Look at that. Is that not just really cool? Okay, hang on. Now we're gonna do this. Um, oops. Glue this right on here. And I want all of these to meet like right down here in the bottom. That's the starburst part of it. Because it kind of goes like this, right? Look at how pretty that is. And you also need a stitched, oh, this is, oh yeah, this is white. Oh, I know, I need to do a stitch shaped circle. Mm, here we go. I thought I had this cut out, but I don't. And there it is. No, nope, that's not it either. Oh my lord, you guys, this is turning into a mess. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna stamp this. And here we go. I'm going to use my shaded spruce ink. And this is the Forever Fern stamp set. So we're gonna do shaded spruce, just like this, on a stitch circle. And then we have these beautiful, beautiful leaves. And I'm going to use the pear pizzazz. And again, Kathy Miller, one of my team members, designed this. I'm going to stamp off once, and then I'm going to come in here and stamp again. That piece of white that we're going to be using for the inside, we're going to stamp that in the shaded spruce with this leaf pattern. And wait until you see full strength how beautiful this is look at how beautiful that is crazy crazy beautiful right okay so we've got this and this and we're gonna oh here's our gold right here I'm supposed to have another little gold circle you guys but I don't but I'll show you what the card looks like when it's done we're gonna put this in here just like this with a gold circle behind it um, also, I'm going to take some of the Forever Fern. There's a ribbon combo pack with this. You get this really cool weaved ribbon. And also, this is called Forever Greenery, this gold, which is a gold cording, which is really pretty. So you're going to take a 7-inch piece of this. Whoops. And I'm going to fold it in half like this. And I'm trying to get it folded in half. Here we go. Just like that. You're going to put this behind your circle. And you're going to have a piece of gold on there. Whoops. Just like this. And then trim it up a little bit. Okay. And we're also going to add some of our faceted, our gold faceted gems. I don't even know where they are. But here's what the card looks like. See the gold underneath there? That was done with the layering circles. Here's our beautiful weaved ribbon. Is that not so pretty? Now, this is called the Starburst Technique. And this is my August Technique Club card. So when you're in my online Technique Club, each month you place a minimum $25 order. And you will get this, which is an instruction card that tells you how to do this technique. You can keep a, and collect a whole bunch of these. And then you also get a card using that technique. And, oh, this was Kathy's birthday card to me. Isn't that cute? She used happy birthday. I used to a friend that makes me smile. So there we go. That's how you do the starburst technique isn't that fun i love this
So, and I'll finish this up because I don't have that circle that goes behind there. And, oh, yeah, you know how things go sometimes, right? They aren't always perfect all the time. And I'll also let you guys know where this is coming from because I don't remember. The leaf is not in here, I don't think. So, yeah. Anyways, beautiful paper. Gorgeous card. Really fun technique. And where's our other one? Here's our envelope we did tonight for our slimline card. That's really fun, right? And then our cutie patootie little gift card holder that moves. Yay! All right, please don't forget to share this video. That really helps me grow my business. Also, I appreciate your orders. You're going to find an online ordering button in the right-hand column of my blog. My blog address is right here. Also, this is my host code right now. If your order is under $150, please use this code. But if it's not, if it's over $150, don't use the code. You're going to get some rewards of your own, and I want you to have those. Oh, here's those gems. I couldn't find them. The gilded gems. Those are what Kathy used on my birthday card. Isn't that so pretty? Yeah, you'll find all the details for all of these cards, all the dimensions, uh, shopping list, colors, the whole kit and caboodle on my blog tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight because I have a blog hop that went live at 8 o'clock tonight. Go check that out on my blog. Some fun fall cards. I think you're going to like them. I've got a whole set on there tonight. And uh, thank you guys for sharing. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. I absolutely love it. Don't forget also, right now, we have a big promotion going. You get two free stamp sets and a pack of rhinestones when you order our discount shopper kit. Plus, you'll get a 20% discount on all of your future orders. And um, this is... Kathy is one of my team members. Being on my team is so much fun, you guys. Being part of something much bigger is so much fun. If you are not already a discount shopper with Stampin' Up!, I highly recommend that you get a discount on, your, on all your products. You're going to get eight card packs here and eight card packs here, plus two stamp sets included with $125 of product of your choice. A paper pumpkin kit coupon to redeem for a paper pumpkin kit. You get free shipping. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Now, also on my blog in the right-hand column is a um, uh, $99 kit button. When you click on that, it's going to take you and tell you all the details. It'll answer all your questions. And if you have any additional questions... Please don't hesitate to ask me. I would love to have you on my team. And I see people going, now, Kelly, go to bed. <laughs> I'm telling you, I really am because I'm pretty tired. I've been up since 5 a.m. I was driving all day, and um, I'm just kind of wiped out tonight. So I'm going to take off my crown and head up to bed, right? Heal my little scratched buns. <laughs> If you missed the beginning, you guys have to go back and listen to my story about my scratched buns, okay? Thank you guys so much. You have a wonderful week. I will see you back here again on Sunday. And watch my blog because if something happens, I'm going to be up hunting in northern Wisconsin again. If something happens that I can't get back here by 7 p.m., I will let you guys know and I'll reschedule probably to Monday night instead of Sunday night. But I don't anticipate any problem. So... Okay, have a great week, you guys. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate you. Bye-bye.